So here's how this is working, all right? Notice this form right here is really what we just did. f of x equals ax squared, right? But now we're adding something to it. Well, on a graph, what's, what's that going to do to the parabola? So if this is about something that we would have had before. If I add a k, though, what does that do to the parabola? It doesn't, it doesn't squeeze it or expand it at all or widen it. All it's going to do is it's going to move this parabola either up or down depending on what k is. So I, I would have the same parabola like this but it would be moved up a difference of k. Does that make sense right there? And so if k is negative, then I would move it down and maybe I would have something like this. So it changes where the vertex is. The vertex we can see is the tip of each of these, which is still on the y-axis, and that's shown right here. Uh, and that's shown right here as well, because at the y-axis, all x values are zero. Uh, we just moved it to where whatever this k value is. It's kind of like y equals mx plus b, right? y equals mx, slope times the x, plus b, which is the y-intercept. Now we're using a different letter, k, because we're looking at a nonlinear function. Uh, once again, let, let's use the vertex formula for this one. So let's change this into a quadratic. I've got g of x equals x squared, but this would now be plus 0x and then plus 3, right? So if I wanted to find the vertex, which I'll put here in red, then I would take uh, my b value is 0 all over 2 times a, which is 1 in this case. So that's a negative 0 over 2, which really just ends up being 0. And that's what we had found on that last slide, right? In addition to that, now we're just going to solve this function, but replace x with 0. So g of 0 is the same as 0 squared plus 3, which is 3. So that is the vertex right there, 0, 3, and I can graph that point right here. Since we know where the vertex is right now, and again, we're, I guess in this case we are doing this a little bit backwards. All right, so that blue line right there is the axis of symmetry, and so, yeah, we do have our vertex right here. And then we know the axis of symmetry is just going to go through whatever this x value is. So the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. And that's that blue line that we drew, right? So really, we've only got to go to one side of the point to figure out where the other points are on the other side of the axis of symmetry. And the point, I'm talking about the vertex, by the way. So on this one, I'm going to use a table. So this isn't one where you could say that like m. So when x is 1, I've got 1 squared, which is 1 plus 3. That gives me 4. So 1, 4 would be this point. But again, since I have an axis of symmetry, it's going to mirror itself onto the other side of that axis of symmetry. So that's a negative 1, 4. So let's try x is 2. 2 squared is 4 plus 3. That's 7. So 1, 7, I'm sorry, 2, 7 would be this point, And it would mirror itself onto the other side of that line. Now when I say that it's mirroring itself, it's the same distance to the right as it is to the left, which is what mirroring is. And then let's try 3. 3 squared is 9, plus 3 is 12. So that would give me 3, 12. All right there. If I wanted to try 4, I could. It would give me 4, 19. And it would give me these other pairs as well. So that gives me these points like this. And yes, we do have that vertex right there. All right, I'm pretty good with that. You guys remember what to do if you miss a point on a graph? Just draw a figure. 
Yeah. <laughs> it just draw a bigger point. Like I, I missed that point right there. So, bigger point. Man, that hits the grip now.